Hello from Brussels. The anguish and horror facing the people of Ukraine are uppermost in our thoughts and in our hearts as the war in Ukraine rages on. The humanitarian situation deteriorates and the impact on neighbouring countries and indeed the entire world grows each day. Everything we hold dear, not least the fragile peace in Europe that's held since 1945, albeit with some notable exceptions like the war in former Yugoslavia, is under threat. And we've certainly witnessed nothing on this scale and certainly nothing as geopolitically threatening to the entire rules-based international order. Transport has already been severely impacted by this crisis, not least because of the tide of humanity fleeing Ukraine, but also because of the cancellations, rerouting and disruption to passenger and trade routes. And that's before the full economic impact of sanctions, oil and gas price hikes, shortages really kick in. We're about to witness the biggest challenge faced by our economies, our societies and therefore the transport sector since the Second World War. Because the economic impact will affect every aspect of life from the cost of living to the supply of basic foodstuffs. And let's be honest and realistic, not only do we have to move away from an over-reliance on Russian oil and gas quicker than we planned, but we may also have no choice if, as is threatened, the Russian taps are turned down or even off. With this in mind, the US and UK have already announced a ban on Russian oil and gas imports, and the European Commission has published its Repower EU strategy, which will seek to pave the way for diversification from Russian energy, speed up the renewable rollout, improve energy efficiency, and replace gas in heating and power. It plans to reduce Europe's demand for Russian gas by two thirds before the end of this year. We may feel individually helpless in the face of such an assault on Ukraine, on the rules-based international order, on our economy and our society, and also on our senses. But we must act, act decisively and act collectively. And the strength of the resistance in Ukraine to the Russian invasion by the Ukrainian people and the speed and the strength of the international reaction against it should inspire us all. In particular, transport, which is one of the fastest growing consumers of fossil fuel, needs to press on with its mission to reach zero carbon sooner rather than later. Digitalization must be stepped up to make the transition more efficient and accessible, and we must enhance the appeal of more sustainable transport modes, including public transport, shared mobility, cycling and walking. Above all, we need to work ever closer together to achieve this mission. That's why an UCTI delegation will be visiting the city on the 21st and 22nd of March to meet our friends, our neighbours and our allies to strengthen our collective resolve to address these challenges. Do let me know if you wish to join us.